Hello everyone, it's Nick with the STARS program. Welcome to our YouTube How to Use the STARS application video series. This is the first video and it is intended to show all users how to use the basics of the program. All right, and so please always just remember that we are at a new address. It's at www.starsprogram.org and whenever you go to log in uh, you, the program will attempt to remember your previous account information if you've tried to sign in. Uh, if you've never logged in on the device you're on before, just use add another account um, and you can enter your username login. Please always remember if you used our previous program that the current login is your username at starsprogram.org. Alright, so Whenever you go to log in, if you cannot remember your password, there is always the automatic forgot my password function. Every user has access to this and you can use it to reset your own password without having to wait for an admin to do it for you. All right, and so we're gonna go ahead and log in. Whenever we log in, that will take us to our dashboard. So whenever you log in, you will always be on your dashboard. That is your home screen. All right, and so it should look like this. You'll have your active stars available to you. And for this demo, I belong to Squad 51 EMS. So you can see I have three kids that list me as their primary EMS provider. There's also a fourth one over here that belongs to a different department. All that means is that an admin has affiliated this star with me as well. So they clearly live with this EMS agency, but maybe they attend school uh, in my venue or else then maybe they come stay with their grandmother in the summers at my venue or something like that. So somebody thought it was important enough to make them available to me on my dashboard. The idea is the vast majority of the time when you log in to our program for an emergency, we want that kid's plan to be on your dashboard screen, uh, just easily available to you. You can use this search tab to narrow down either by number or you can narrow down by name to quickly find your stars, especially if you work in a location where you have this entire screen filled with kids. It's just a quick way that you can search. All right, in the, uh, for in the instance where the kid is not on your home screen, so say you had some kid visiting from somewhere else and you have to go look them up. Once again, you can hit search all on the left. You can search either by the number if you know it or by the kid's name. So say the parents give you the name and you hit search and it will find that kiddo for you. And so then we could access that. And so we're running this kid for an emergency and here is access to her form. All of these are clearly sample forms that I am showing you here today. So that's how you use uh, both your dashboard and your search all function. If you ever need to return to your dashboard, you can either click on stars or on dashboard at the top and it will return you to your home screen. So now we're going to look at uh, navigating a specific form that we find. So we get dispatched to our emergency, we locate the plan that we want to look at, and there's already a few pieces of information we're getting from this plan. This is called a badge, and it represents each STARS plan in the application. This is, of course, the STARS number. This is the primary EMS district that that kid is assigned to, so probably where they live. And then it also tells you the state and county that they're from. Anytime you're accessing for an emergency, we of course ask that you click yes. And then we have our standardized STARS form. And for those of you who have worked with us for a while, 
you'll recognize many of these components. So there will always be the patient's name at the top, their STARS number, their, uh, their gender, their age and years, just so you can uh, have another reference to make sure you're looking at the right kid and the right age kid there. A set of well vital signs, which is always important. These should be the last known well set of vital signs so that you can compare those against whatever you're getting on that call that day uh, to see, you know, a measurement of if that kid is sick or not. All users have the ability to print in the upper right corner. That gives you the ability to print to PDF or to a local printer if you have it affiliated. And then at the top of every STARS form is the diagnosis, a list of the pathologies that that kid has. We do try to narrow it down to the major ones. You will not find that hospital style list of 27 different diagnoses here. We really try to focus and prioritize what we think is important for you to know in the emergency. Then in the upper right, you have baseline findings. And in a modern day STARS form, we work pretty hard on this section to really try and paint a good picture of how that kid typically acts. It's really hard to know if that kid is acting atypically that day if you don't know what is normal for them. And so that's why we work on that section. Anticipated emergencies. These are a list of emergencies that either that kid has previously had or because of their pathology, we think they're inclined uh, or highly likely to experience that emergency. Obviously not a comprehensive list of every emergency they could have. This is also where you'll find some of the specialty treatment information. If that kid has special orders, what you should do for that pathology or that emergency. Cautionary notes is a section where I really focus on information that I think will affect your normal treatment patterns. And so for instance, you know, if the kid's a known difficult airway, well, that might change the way that you approach airway. Or if they have some hardware in their leg and you can't put an IO in that leg, that's obviously need to know information. Sometimes as simple as just patient positioning. If some of my kids have a lung that's smaller on one side or because of their musculoskeletal development, they have to lay in certain ways. And so we'll try to include that information to try and make, uh, make your lives a little easier. Medical equipment, we'll give you the details on that. And then their medication list. The medication list typically does not actually include dosing because a lot of our kids change dosing and meds so frequently. However, sometimes you will find doses in there for things that we think will affect your treatment of the emergency. So for instance, if the kid is on high dose benzos or pain meds at home, that would obviously affect their mentation and maybe how you approach them that day. We will try to include that information. Allergies, um, preferred facilities, and their physician's list. So uh, it is of significant note. So we're always thankful to Cardinal Glennon for housing our program, for putting a roof over our heads, and for allowing us to build and work on this awesome project. I do like to remind everyone that not all STARS patients are Glennon patients. We actually have a whole lot of patients that attend St. Louis Children's or Mercy and then I have a handful out there uh, who attend other facilities in our region. So please always look at what that child's preferred facility is. That is their ideal destination facility for their emergency, and we would like to get them there if at all possible. Uh, it is of note both in the facilities and the contact information. Any phone number you see here is actionable. So if you are on a cellular capable device, and you click, you will have the option to call straight out of the application to that facility or to that parent or whoever you're trying to reach. Demographics is fairly self-explanatory. And then contact information, their home address, their school address, their emergency contacts. If we have a phone number uh, for their emergency contact, that'll show up. The last section on the bottom right is attachments. Um, every live form in the application should have a STARS database HIPAA waiver attached to it. And then we're going to look at some other examples of things that can be attached here shortly. The final piece of information at the bottom of every STARS form is the last updated uh, date for that form. Just always to give you some, you know, some clinical clue of, oh, wow, this information is, you know, was updated yesterday. Everything here should be good to go. Or oh wow, it's been six months since anybody put eyes on this form. Maybe I should ask mom and dad if anything has changed. All right, so we're going to go back to our dashboard. 
And then we can always, uh, sometimes there will be other things attached. And so we're going to take a look at that. So depending on what is attached, it might trigger a red banner on the top of your STARS form. And so what this tells us is that this kid has a complex medical care plan attached. And if you would like to see that, anytime you see a red banner, if you click on it, it will just drop you to the bottom of the form to the attachment section. And then you can open up that attachment and take a look at it. And so um, you will be able to look at this kid's complex medical care plan. There can be a lot of good information in those. We just think sometimes it's it's too much for EMS and emergency. Some of those run six to seven to eight pages. Um, and some of it's not really uh, super useful information for an emergency. I mean, knowing the kid's immunization list back to the beginning of the time probably will not facilitate you running an emergency call on them. Um, but there can still be some good information, and especially for my EDs that access, you might find some really useful um, information in there and procedures and previous history. Some other things that can trigger red banners. So we'll go back and we're going to look at another kiddo. And so if a child has a DNR attached or a do not resuscitate, it, uh, do not resuscitate order, any advanced directive, that information will be included here. Once again, we click on it. That drops us to the bottom, and you can very quickly open and look at that order on your way to the call. Um, whenever I teach on DNRs, I do like to always emphasize uh, the point that parents have the right to rescind the DNR order up to the last minute or the last second. So just because you've seen a DNR on the way to the call, you still might be about to work a full code if you show up and you know the parents say, you know, we're we're not ready or we would really like to do a try a trig change or five minutes of CPR or they may kind of help guide you but at least we've started to have some of those uh, conversations beforehand they can uh, sort of inform your decision making as you go and kind of help you open that conversation with the parents of what they want done what they want to see done for their child all right and then some final things that can be attached um, not all things trigger a red banner, so you can have a patient photo, you can have some information sheets. For instance, we have the LVAD warning sheets in there. We'll have 15 leads for our cardiac kids. Um, so there can sometimes just be other things that are attached here um, that you will maybe help guide your treatment a little bit or else this is just another tool we use for sick, not sick. You know, how is that kid uh, presenting for you today versus a picture of how they should normally be looking and interacting. So, all right, so that is the basics of a STARS form. A final component of the STARS application that all users will have access to is their resources tab. So up at the top, uh, you will have access, to, of course, to your dashboard and then resources, which will actually open a new window for you. All right, and all this is, it has access to some of our other sites and training resources. And then it also has access to some uh, additional how-to guides, some information about the application, um, and then also the ability to report an issue. And so... Uh, please use that if you'd like. You're also always free to email us, uh, but please let us know if you encounter any problems within the application. It's come a long ways. We think it's a whole lot uh, better than it used to be, but it is still a constantly evolving process as we work to improve it. So um, if you ever run into any failures with the STARS application, by all means, crucify me over morning coffee, but then somebody please pick up a phone or pull out a computer Call me, email me, and let us know what we can do to fix it and make it better. Other things that you will find in here are just really those elements spread out over here. We will be updating some more content. Um, and so there, for instance, uh, very shortly is coming a packet for enrolling STARS through the EMS district, just kind of that enrollment referral form paperwork. And so there will be some other things here over time, so make sure that you check back for other additional resources.